Hello, welcome to morebikes.co.uk. We're here with Nathan Moorwood, brilliant uh, global traveller, motorcycle adventurer, par excellence. Every time we say it, he gets a little bit more embarrassed, but you are, so shut up. Um, the reason we're here, Nathan, today is to talk about the types of motorcycle to go touring and doing these big trips on. We're here in front of a pretty standard um, adventure bike for now, the big BMW GS, but you made your name by doing some big trips on a really small bike. Let's start off with that type of motorcycle and then we'll move on to this one yeah i mean i think at the end of the day as long as we said on the previous video as long as it's got two wheels and a, and a seat that kind of does the job i mean i started with the 105 cc i rode that 35,000 miles from sydney to london and then new york to alaska and i think it's important when we're talking about that to realize that was a, at that time in my life that was the best bike for that trip it, yeah. it was economical it was very reliable very robust it was light which meant shipping and any other costs associated with it were very treat, cheap so at that moment, that was the best adventure bike there, there was, the Honda CT110. I mean, so I think it's important to recognise there is no best bike. It's just a, the best bike that's suitable for that trip yeah. that you've got in mind. Yeah. So solo trip across the world, for me, simple technology was ideal. That, that bike, it would only do 40 miles an hour, but it, it, it would do that day in, day out. It would carry a load of luggage. Nobody wanted to steal it. I could get tyres everywhere across the world. You know, India, you're getting tyres for $5.00. Uh, oil, it's dead easy to get. It's, it's just the perfect bike. And one, like you say, 105cc. People would hear that and they can't believe that you can do such a trip no. on such a bike, but you, you've proved that you can. Yeah, and it's not a novelty. People say, oh, did you do it as a novelty? No, no it would just... I mean, they're unburstable engines. And unburstability and durability is all you need. Like, if you're in Pakistan, in the mountains of Pakistan, you do not need power or performance or electronic stability control. You just need to know your bike's going to start tomorrow morning and it's going to do... 300 miles today in comfort and i found like a slow speed on a bike can be quite therapeutic because you you don't have to consider the speed of the, the motion or engaging with what's going on around you just sit at sort of 35 40 i could do that 14 hours a day 15 hours a day i can't sit on this for 14 15 hours a day because you've got so much more to, to, to consider yeah. so i think it's important when you're looking at a trip and what bike you've got to to realize there's no best bike it's just trying to you know put it see what bike you've got and what you can do with it I mean, I had the GS, I bought it almost a year ago, and I got it because I was that annoyed by everyone bagging it out as being a rubbish bike and, and everything. And, and they'd sort of see me with my posted bike as some sort of standing against what this is. And, right. and I always thought, that's, that's crap. I mean, this, I've ridden this bike a lot. I really liked it. It was always my pick of the sort of bigger adventure bike. And it's an exciting bike to ride. And I mean, that's what a bike should be, shouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. should be exciting. So I bought this bike back in February. It's an ex V training school bike. So it was a bit cheaper. It was it was sort of kicked around a lot. It had done a lot of hard miles. It only done three and a half thousand, but it had been kicked around a lot. So I picked this bike up and I rode around it, around on it for about six months. And I kind of thought I need to do something more with it. So I started thinking, well, what could I do? I got myself a girlfriend at that point, and we had moved in together. And I thought, well, I really want to do America again. I did America on the posty bike, but doing America at 37 miles an hour means you've got to pick your route and just stick on it because it's, it's a long way yeah. to anywhere. So I thought, well, let's do America. And I said to the girlfriend at that time, I said, do you want, you know, do you want to do a bike trip across America? Yeah, yeah, that, cool. So, you know, she'd done a bike trip she'd before. She'd never been on a bike before. So, she, right. she, so she'd never been on a bike, never a biker. So I, I, we rode up to Matlock one day. You know, that was like the preparation. She says, yeah, I can do this. It's all right. I was like, all right, let's, let's go to America. So, so this bike air freighted it uh, with a company called James Cargo who air freighted it to Las Vegas. And we picked Las Vegas because it's, when you land in Las Vegas, you've got a few, about two miles before you come in, in the absolute middle of the desert. You've got no interstates to negotiate, no heavy traffic. So in terms of, you know, a first trip to up, it, yeah. it was perfect. Yeah. And it's also Las, Las Vegas, you know, you're flying a motorbike on a plane into Las Vegas and you go to the airport, you pick it up, you get given this big crate with your bike in, you crank it open with a crowbar and then your key's there and you just ride away from Las Vegas airport, you've got your girlfriend on the back and your luggage and everything you need to survive. And we were there, five, we did a five week trip from New York to Las Vegas to New York. So... No, in that case, this bike was the absolute perfect bike for it. It was comfortable, it was refined, it got cruise control, um, electronic suspension, which is, I mean, it's something to go wrong if, the, if you're in the middle of nowhere. But when you're in America, where, where there's a good service, ne you know, service dealer network around you, yeah. it's perfect because yeah. depending on how much weight we've got, we can jack it up, jack it down. Yeah, so this, the GS was, was perfect. I did do some 
changes to it. I don't know if you want to talk. Well, they're the things. They're the things, aren't they? Because uh, GS, we see thousands of GS yeah. out there. Loads of people have got them. Loads of people have done some sort of touring on them. But what I want to know from you and what we want to know from more bikes is really what changes you've made or what you've bolted on. You've been there, you've done it. What I particularly like about your style of traveling is that there's no sort of fanciness for the sake of fanciness. If it's on here, it's on here because it works. Yeah. So take us round your bike. Let's start at the back end, luggage-wise, and just take us round and show us what you've done to add to a GS from your point of view. Yeah. Well, first of all, hard panniers. Uh, I use soft luggage on the posty bike trip because I'm on my own. I, I didn't have much to carry. carry but a two-up trip across America hard panniers every day i also thought, found, thought it would be more protective should we have a topple or something like that right. you know i've got something very precious to me on the back and I, I want to know if we do a little topple maybe the panniers will take a lot of uh, stress so we bolted on some metal mule utes which is metal mule sort of budget pannier range uh, it, it, you don't get the quick release and a few other trick bits but for about 800 quid you've got a really sturdy uh two mil aluminium box um I know from using them, it passed through. This is just a really good setup. Uh, yeah. the, the frames are really nice, stainless steel frames. Um, and I've got a 30, 31 on the right and a 38 on the left. I mean, I could have gone bigger. I think they do a 45. So I could have, got, I could have had a 38 and a 45 on this side. But I think you, what I find is that the more room you give yourself, the more stuff you'll pack yeah. and the more necessary stuff you pack. So the smaller room, you, smaller amount of space you give you, the more give yourself the more you sort of think about what you're going to take and Focus what not to take. Yeah, yeah. Because half the time you'll take stuff that you don't need and the beginning of a trip is, is refinement. So you'll set off from your house with everything you think you need. After a week, you've probably posted half of that home because yeah. you don't need it. You know, you always overpack. Um, I mean, so, so we had the camping gear in the pannier, in that pannier, sort of the cooking gear and things like that, in this pannier, shoes and uh, other just bits and bobs. Uh, and then uh, for our clothes... We had these alt rider, what are called cinch bags, which are basically just dry bags that, that I've not gotten very well fastened. I've not done a very good job, to be honest. I've, I've, I've bodged them on. But these strap on top and the dry bags, and we had one of these each for our clothes. Um, I mean, going across America, we, we, we sort of knew the temperatures would, would be warm. It was end of summer, so it was always going to be warm. So we didn't need to pack anything really heavy duty warm clothing. We needed waterproofs and things like that. But we had one of these each. And, and then you we found these to be waterproof, did you? Yeah, these were, well, these were fine. It didn't, it didn't rain, but they are, yeah, I've, I've tested them since and they are completely waterproof. Right. Uh, I mean, they open at either end, so there is a bit of a system, so, you, you know, you have to know which way you've loaded stuff. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, but as a means of just chucking stuff and giving, giving you extra space in your panniers, then they're, they're quite handy. Right, okay. Um, Roughly what sort of money? I think about 35, 40 each. That's not bad, so is not it? Bad, That's really man. good. Not bad. I mean... Um, yeah, so we've got 800, set, 800 pounds worth of panniers, yeah. 40 each of them. Then this is an old dry bag that I just found. I had, it, I had it a while. And this is where we put all our camping stuff. You know, so to keep the, tri the trip cost down, we were going to camp most of the way. So obviously we, needed a, we took a three-man tent, a couple of sleeping bags, roll mats, everything. So that all went in the dry bag on the back. Um, it's good also to keep your, your equipment, this is going to sound daft, but it's good to keep your equipment separate so you know where it is, yeah. isn't it? So, so your clothes in one, her clothes in another, camping gear in here. Yeah, we knew where everything is because the worst thing about living on a bike is trying to, well, just trying to figure out where everything is and yeah. losing stuff. And, and, and the better planned and organised you can be from day one, the, the better. So knowing where everything is is, is is crucial. And so we put all the camping stuff in here and we did think about a top box, but I'm n not really a big fan of top boxes. And they're also obviously limited in their dimensions. Right. So a dry bag allows us to put a tent in lengthways and is that, is that why you don't particularly like top boxes? Because you, you prefer the flexibility yeah, of this? Yeah, you, you won't get a tent in a top box. So you, and, and I just don't like the look of them, to be honest. Aesthetically, I don't like them. It's your bike. Yeah, so I found this. There's a metal mule as well as a pannier. They do a, a, a rear rack, which unlike most of the other rear racks on the market, I don't, can't really see it. Uh, it, it protrudes I mean, quite a long way back, which means that you can get a dry bag on the back and yeah. still have plenty of room for the pillion passenger. Whereas a lot of them stop about stop about there at right. that point so you can't it which pushes your bag that way yeah. and leaves less room for your passenger right. you need, yeah, you need to so this could, off the back. yeah so this i mean i know i haven't got it set up for two at minute but you can have that effectively there which makes loads of room for your pillion yeah and then the pillion, well, the pillion yeah i mean what sarah really liked about the setup was that she felt she, cocooned by the baggage she could almost lean against this she got these sort of nursing her in yeah 
And so for somebody who, who was a bit probably apprehensive, she felt quite confident in, in the setup. Right. Um, but it's, it's all personal taste at the end of the day. <laughs> but with a two-up trip, you're always going to have to negotiate or, or try and compromise somewhere. somewhere yeah, I mean, absolutely. she took that water bottle, bless her. And um, that had to go after about... The first week, because we couldn't. I was like, "Why are we doing? Got a hot water bottle? It were, I mean, we went through Death Valley at fifty degrees. We got a <laughs> hot water bottle. So we. I feel for uh, it. Yeah, yeah. So um, our luggage were fine. I, I think we. we I, for once, I did a good job of luggage. Normally, I'm a bit rubbish at, at knowing how to pack and where to pack, but right. I think I'm starting to refine it all. And um, what about things like 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 this round here yeah, and uh, and you know tires on the bike and things that you've changed? Well. What this? I mean, this is just an oil um, oil reserve canister, and I loved the uh, the look of it. It's an hard cases one. Roger, who was based over near Peterborough, and he makes panniers as well called hard cases, uh, and he just made these beautiful welded aluminium fluid bottles. And I, I really just got it because I liked it rather than because I needed it. <laughs> so I could have saved money and got a plastic one, but I just love it. It's it's really. It, I mean, like it's got a uh, beveled top, and it's just beautiful. So I got one of them off him. And, uh, and well, that was just for oil, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. just got to put some oil in. But then I was nervous that I might have uh, contaminated it somehow, so I never <laughs> used it. Never, used, it would have been better having sort of brandy in it or something so like you, that. You broke your own rule there a little bit, didn't you? But that, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. that. It does look pretty trick on the it bike. Does, I, I just love it. it. I just, I just love it. Um, and I got a tool, a tool uh, uh, tube there, sort of tie up to that. And that's just I took a selection of tools, basic stuff that you might need just to. Maybe remove wheels and yeah. basic panels and stuff. Because obviously on a bike like this, you can't... If anything major went wrong, you, you can't yeah. do anything anyway. No, you're at dealers, yeah. So you're at dealers. And again, a great thing about America, you've got a, an extensive dealer network of BMW. And with the insurance that you take out to cover the bike while you're in America, it comes with breakdown cover. Tires are fitted the uh, Continental TKC 70s. And they've still probably got another thousand on them. As an all-round dual sport tire, they are pretty good. And on-road, they're good. A lot of grip in the corners. Um, and obviously they'll last a good deal of time so yeah good all round tyre I've been very impressed with them in fairness anything else at the back of the bike here that you've uh, changed no I think that's it ok that's let's it. move up to uh, the tank then because you've got your, your well, tank bag on here the only thing I've got down here if I don't know if you can see I've got pivot pegs which uh, these are trick pegs that rock you see so for transition riding so from going from sat down to stood up they're, they're supposed to assist you because they twist I think they're not very good I won't bother with them um, and on this side I've got a Wonderlic gear lever which is uh, adjustable right. which you probably can't see but it's an adjustable Joking gear lever out. which I, I do quite like that it's just down there yeah it looks nicer than the original fitment and it's adjustable which again if you're doing a lot of stood up riding on these bikes it's nice to be able to adjust you know the reach and, and um, angle of, of the foot peg so that's quite nice a Wonderlic one right. um, yeah tank Oxford, bag's just a tank bag Oxford tank bag yeah I think it's a 20 litre one I mean, I, I think for me, a tank bag's uh, crucial. You could probably do... Well, I did Europe for nearly a week with just a tank bag because you can cram so much into a tank bag and you can have the essentials at hand, so that you can your passport, your paperwork. And uh, we, we carried this, cause, which is our stone. This was, a, <laughs> this was a stone we picked up because the problem with these bikes is that you jack the suspension right up to compensate for, for the rider and the pillion. Yeah. So that jacks the height up, which makes the stand too short. Short, short size stand. Yeah, and then when you've got all this weight on, when you've got to put it on the side stand as it is, it just feels like it's going to go, and it puts so much strain on the on the side stand. So this was our rock that we picked up somewhere that you know we we come to a stop, and then instead of putting it straight down, I throw it on. Go on, I got it. And then and then like that, and that Sarah's job was to pick that up before we set up every day. <laughs> so we travelled for you know. Like, uh, 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 Are you familiar with the work of Father Ted? No. I love my brick. Do you not know? Okay. Well, no, well, no. Well. I, I, no, no. But, <laughs> so that's the problem with the, you know the electronics. Well, not the electronic suspension, but the yeah, yeah, the yeah. Adjustment yeah. Adjustment. Bike, you, you, you're always going to have to accommodate it somehow. And so tank bag was really good, really useful. Yeah. Um, Rider, American brand. They they design and make their own uh, engine protection, which I've, I've had that on for quite a bit quite a while but uh, i mean and using this bike off-road it, it's it's essential to put some kind of protection on it this stuff's really good because it bolts to the frame which i know if you have a massive crash it can twist the frame but 
if, if you, you have, have a, if you, you have, have a crash, crash that big, yeah, that big, you'll exactly. Have exactly. So they've they've took loads of knocks. I've dropped this, you know, quite a bit this bike now, and it's they've always survived well. And what's good about them, they allow you to still service the engine without removing them. Right. Okay. So some of them won't allow you to take the side covers off to change check the valve clearances and things like that. Right. So if you take it into a uh, into a bike dealer to have the valve clearance change and they have to take the engine guards off, you've got to pay for that labour. Yeah. Equally, the sump guard is uh, is got you know. Um, uh, slot so you can get the oil drainage and things oh, like okay. that right. and, it's, and it's good in the sump guard is good in this regard it doesn't actually bolt to the sump because the problem with a lot of them is that they bolt to the sump which if you then rip that sump guard off it's and like it rips the know. sump yeah. you can't buy sumps individually you've got to buy a new engine right so this doesn't bolt that this uh, sump guard bolts to the bottom of the engine guards and then it bolts to the uh, center stand i noticed you've got things like lots of clamps and stuff like that yeah, and cables the garmin garmin um their helmet camera thing. Right. So you got that camera there. You got a GoPro yeah. mount on the front. Yeah. Which I want Joe, to do. Joe, do you want to come? Do you want to come around uh, to the front? Come around the other way. There you go. Yeah. So you've got the you've got the GoPro uh, mount at the front, which you don't recommend because you've zip tied it. I don't recommend because it, yeah, it vibrates. Um, <laughs> I, I think that's a problem with, with. To be honest, I've still not found a decent helmet camera. Haven't you? No, I think they're all flawed in some capacity. Try the centre. No, I've not. not Senna 10S. Pretty good. Yeah, pretty other. Hey, Tom Tom, I got that new one out. You never yeah, know. Maybe I'll try that. But the GoPro, I was disappointed with. Half the time it didn't record, and oh, just a, you know, so you miss footage, and it, it, sh it. I mean, obviously, I didn't probably mount it right, but it shook a lot on there. <laughs> so I've just got loads of footage. <laughs> you know, like America, so it's every, you know, every inch of road in America is covered by them uh, speeding strips. No, you caught to a roundabout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I wouldn't recommend that. The other important thing I would add to the, the changes I've made on this bike. I've got some, I don't know if you can really see these, but these are support struts for the for the uh, screen. The problem with the GS, it's got a very vibey screen. It'll, it'll trem, tremor a lot. And also, uh, when they get used off-road a lot, they the vibrations cause the um, arms to snap. These, they've just got plastic retainer arms holding this, the bottom end of the, right. the thing. And once they snap, the, the screen falls flat and they're an absolute pig to put new ones on. Right. I mean, it took me two hours and I had to take the clocks off and the headlights and everything to replace it. Apparently there is an easy way, so I, I'd got, <laughs> I sort of did it the long way around. But um, to, to stop that happening again, I fitted these. These are also from Wonderlick and they're just like 30 quid and they bolt onto your retainers here and then bolt onto the, the screen and they still allow just adjustment, but you have to, you, know, you have to, you do lose the immediacy of the of the hand wheel. Yeah, but if you try, if you try, try that for the yeah, security exactly. and strength, I guess. So that's, I mean, they're a bit fiddly, but it means you're never going to lose How them. much were they? 30 quid. From Wonderlick? Yeah. From Wonderlick do some really good stuff, yeah. don't they? So I was, I'm happy with them just because I wouldn't want the faffer having to replace them arms, them arms again. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a weak design, I think, on this bike, to be honest. Yeah, just looking here, you've got a cover for the headlights. Yeah, just... Uh, I What's that from? Is that an as well? Outrider. Yeah, they give me one to try. I mean, it. Um, I guess if you take a big stone, the the price of replacing this is a lot less than the price of a, a guard. I think that's that's the way they they work it. Right. And if you're doing a lot of off roading, sometimes we'll do some trail riding, following other bikes, and they're flicking up stones and things like that. Yeah. yeah. So you, I mean, if you broke one of them, what'd it be? Four hundred, five hundred quid for an headlight? I bet. Yeah. Well, Easy. I wouldn't know, but it wouldn't surprise yeah, it, it me. Wouldn't be surprise that, me yeah. yeah. So that's pretty much the changes. I mean, I've got a lock here. Took that on Oxford lock just to. To secure it when we're in America outside the motel. Yeah, this sounds this sounds stupid, right? This probably sounds really daft to you, but it's just the idea of wrapping the lock around the engine uh, protection. Do you know what I mean? It's just it's just a nice way. You might not look getting at it and think it's way. an elegant way of doing yeah, it, but not. it's a nice way of getting it out of the way. You know? Yeah, you just want to get stuff out. If you, yeah, if it's not usable like that, or or, or it's not important. I mean, it, yeah. it's not doing anybody any not, harm, no, exactly. is it? I mean, no, so exactly. It's, exactly. Get it out of the way because otherwise you're going to have it in a pannier, and then the more weight you've got in the pannier, well, I mean, which is what I found on this bike with two open all the luggage, it, do, it is tiring. You yeah. know, so you, yeah. the less weight you've got in your panniers and in your back bag, the better. So trying to get some weight at the front. Is... And you know, people are going to, some people are going to look at that, I'm sure, and say, "Oh, you don't want the lock there next to there in case it pushes in." But again, if you have a crash big enough that that lock is going to affect that, which is going to affect your engine. The least of your worries is going to be the fact that that lock has affected that, which is pushed yeah, into the engine. I never even it? thought about that, Tony. But that's probably a good point. But oh, well, well um, yeah, and it you... also what I like about it on the uh, Appalachian Mountain Road, you can try and get your lock down. <laughs> you know, when you go around that corner, this dangles out. 
So you got I've got pictures where you have me locks like an inch. Really? You know, like, oh, trying to, so trying to get me padlock. Hey. Yeah. Forget getting your knee down on an adventure bike. You just want your lock get down. Your so the new thing is getting your padlock down. Forget getting your knee down on the adventure bike. It's getting a padlock down. Um, I tell you another thing that I noticed. Uh, talk about getting stuff out of the way is your your tripod on yeah, the other yeah. side of the bike. Yeah, I took a tripod with me and didn't in five weeks unstrap it from the bike. Really? Didn't, didn't use it once. No, I thought I'll take it just in case and then. I've just let it. It's oh, just you done some sort of selfie stick job, is it? Or did you not bother no, with anything we, like that? We, we, oh, I don't. We bought a selfie yeah. stick and never used that either. Oh, really? So, no. I'm, that looked like a bone of contention. Did you buy it or did... I bought it, but... Uh, just Sarah didn't buy it. Wally, don't you, with a selfie stick? Oh, okay. I know, I just... But don't you want that photo? You're all about stopping and taking photos. No, I just what I'd do is I'd just reach out Put it on cruise control, then, re- <laughs> and then reach for my SLR and point that SLR back at us. Really, simple as that. Yeah, and then if I'm riding along, I mean, I'm, I'm terrible. And Sarah says, you're going to have to stop doing it, because I'd ride along and be taking photos. Because I'm used to having a clutch, you know, on my post it's clutchless, so I yeah. could do anything I wanted with that, course, on, except photos, but on this, I Very can't, good. so I've got, you know, <laughs> I might need to stop and I can't put clutching because I've got my camera in my hand. That's got to be a bit difficult when you've got somebody on the back who perhaps hasn't done a bike tour before, all the stopping. If they're not used to it, you see something, you think, oh, I want to get a photo of that. Yeah, she's, uh, it seems like in, in every couple there's one photographer and one who, <laughs> non-photographer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she got fr- so frustrated, be like, oh, I'm just going to stop taking another photo <laughs> of, of this desert. <laughs> same as the desert, like, you know, like a mile ago and then same as the desert two mile ago. So she got fed up, really a bit fed up. She just wanted to ride and see. Make her the photographer, man. She didn't. She didn't want to. She she's she's got eyes. They they record her images. So. Oh bless, so, bless. Uh, right. Well, look. I think that's it for the bike, isn't there? Yeah. There's nothing different. This is this screen standard. Is this the yeah, stock screen? Is it? Screen. Yes. Yeah. Everything else is, is standard. I mean, uh, getting an ex training school bike, I've had to replace some plastics, and then like a Wally, uh, I'd only had it two weeks, and. Uh, I left my disc lock on, didn't I? And then rode off. <laughs> Smashed the plastic. <laughs> Smashed me, uh, me mud guard. I was surprised how cheap that was. I think we're only 55 foot in your mud guard. Really? So, uh, that's, uh... Oh, mate, it happens to everybody. But just as we're talking about the bike and specifically about your trip to Las Vegas, we can't really wrap this up. We are about to wrap this video up, but we can't wrap it up without mentioning what else you did in Las Vegas. Because you took Sarah Strip out there. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> what stays on tour, etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you took Sarah out there. She was your girlfriend and... We got married because we, we proposed in Grand Canyon and then two days later we thought, well... Oh, can't we all? We neither of us could be bothered to right go back home and and go through the rigmarole of, of organising a wedding with all that family, you know, families and friends. So we thought we'll go back to Vegas and we got married at a chapel with Elvis. Elvis walked her down the aisle. He, Elvis was our witness and sang "Viva Las Vegas" at the end. <laughs> we had a dance and it was weird. You know, that's how you do a motorcycle yeah. adventure. But that's it. Like I say, it's about adventure, isn't it? And um, it's not all about the bike. The bike is just a conduit to to yeah. getting out there and doing it. And um, you know, bikes are great for that. They really are. Whatever bike you ride. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, I always thought, like, it's a similar to trip to what we've just done, something like a second-hand Varadero. You don't have to spend a couple of grand to get a decent bike. To, you don't need this. You, yeah, yeah. you know, a couple of grand. V-Strom, any V-Strom, yeah, anything. Old Africa Twin. Yep. The ideal yeah. for it, wasn't that? Anything with pillion space. And not everybody will come back with a new wife. No, so, so, so hats off to you. Mate. Thank you. Listen, thanks for taking us around the bike. Really appreciate it. Stay with us on morebikes.co.uk. We're going to chat to Nathan about a couple more things. You'll find them on our video list.